Welcome to Presence. How do you live and lead consciously in today's life? And what we're going to dive into today is what a lot of people talk about, about taking a leap of faith and how and when you do that. I'm Ravi Tangri, and this is my co-host, Holly Duckworth. Hi, Ravi. Great to see you. We have a great show planned today. We do indeed. I think this is we're going to be going all over the place today because there's so many bases to touch on. Um, when you're talking leap of faith, it gets into so many things um, about intuition, about what is a leap, what is faith, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Rob, let's let's break it down. Let's start simple. I think let's kind of create a foundation of um, understanding of these words for our listeners and for our, our viewers mm -hmm. today. Um, starting out, what is a leap? And I know it sort of sounds funny to go say, really, Holly, like everybody knows what a leap is. But I think uh, because we talk about these consciousness concepts and sometimes we do get a little a little, little out there, um, I think it's great to start with the foundation. So I really wanted to remind viewers that a leap is jumping with great force, great intention, great integrity. And that um, it's not just, oh, I think I might do this or I could do this or whatever, but it's really putting powerful intention force into this thing that you're doing. Um, and then faith. I've written hundreds of thousands of words and many, many paid pers on faith. So we could do a whole show on, on what is faith. But um, today, again, to keep a foundation of simplicity so you and I are, are starting from the same place and our listeners are, um, we'll just simplify faith and, and say faith is about trust and about having confidence in something. And yes, faith does have religious connotations. Faith can have spiritual connotations. And as we explore this topic and others throughout this show and future shows, uh, we'll certainly come across a lot of words that have kind of a, a human context and then might also have spiritual or, or religious uh, connotations as well. But, uh, you know, to get us at least on the common ground, we'll use faith, meaning taking that leap, that leap of faith as um, jumping with great force into the the trust factor, the trusting of yourself, your community, and may, and if faith or religion is a part of that for you, great. So what is a leap of faith? It's that opportunity to leap with great force into trusting yourself or trusting your spirit or your higher power in that which you are um, feeling or called to do. And I think that that's important that you you can have the spiritual or the religious context, but at its core, it's trusting something and for me, when it comes to leap of faith, it's that you, our, our whole society is very left-brained, that they need concrete data. And it's, it's about trusting something maybe that you can't concretize, a knowing, and there's a real trust there, and, and feeling that. And absolutely, a leap is we are not tiptoeing through the tulips. We are taking a leap right into the field without... Um, if you will, empirical evidence that says you take step A and you will get result B, right? That, that there's a trust there somewhere. Yeah, that inner knower, that inner knowing, that that gut instinct within, within you says, that which I'm currently experiencing no longer works. I need to shift, change, adapt a thought, a belief, or an action to put myself in more alignment with this gut feeling or this thing that I know I'm supposed to do, be, or have. Yeah. And, you know, it's, um, this wasn't part of what we talked about in preparing for the show, but I, I, something's just coming to me now. And let's, let's take a, if we can take a leap of faith in this, it might be useful to share a couple of examples that we've had about, about leaps of faith that we've taken. Um, now this show, for example, is just certainly one. Um, but to, to give people an idea of what we're talking about, I, I don't know, is there something, do you want to talk about the show and how this came about? Oh, I, I was going that the exact same place. You and I are so in sync. It's so funny. Yeah. You know, I mean, the show was a leap of faith. It started 10 days ago or so when you posted on Facebook, does anybody see these seven trends in life and business or these 10 trends or whatever? And I was like, God, I wonder what Ravi's seeing because I'm, I'm seeing stuff too and scan the list and many of them we were in alignment with. But certainly I remember number seven was spirituality and business, which has been my emerging and evolving brand and marketplace. So I wrote you back. Hey, I'm thinking about this. 
we um, haven't seen each other in the same room in, in several years, but had a great video chat. And you kind of shared what you were feeling. Hey, I think we can help people bring uh, consciousness into their life and their leadership. And, and how do you feel about this dynamic? And we listened to our guts. We took some time out and then we leaped into the first show. And um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and Ravi and tell them about our ex exciting leap this week. So after we created this, the first show, I had asked Ravi, hey, Ravi, what do you think about turning the show into a podcast? And he listened to his gut, too, and said, well, why don't we give it a shot? Um, I've never started a podcast before. Don't listen to very many podcasts. Really was like, I don't know why, but I feel called. I, I have my gut, my inner knowing said that some of you may not be able to watch the show live on Blab, or perhaps you're not a YouTube watcher, but you would download it and maybe have a little windshield time with Ravi and I in the co-pilot seats. So um, I took the leap. We um, are happy to announce that uh, the show is now available on SoundCloud if you use that platform and via our friends at SoundCloud, uh, we are able to have the show on iTunes. So uh, that's one small leap of faith that I took. I have really no idea, but I just kept following my intuition, asking a question, follow intuition, ask a question, and then act that um, is going to invite us the opportunity to share the show with a lot of other people. And uh, while that might seem like something that doesn't fit into your world, what is that one little thing that your gut is telling you you should do? that you you could act upon because that's what we're here to inspire absolutely and i mean it's the the thing is we, this there was no evidence no facts that this is exactly strategically what we needed to do but it felt right correct for us and i think that's that's the key i mean one one thing for me i'm going to talk about during the show about i i'm still a scientist in many ways and i you know, I'm not here to say absolutely you should trust your intuition every time and jump into it. I, I really believe in proving this stuff to yourself empirically. Uh, for me, I've done enough that I trust it. And one example that jumps to mind um, that was the most extreme that really gives me faith in my intuition is uh, years ago, I was going to travel to India. And I was um, going to travel with a friend of mine. We were going to separate once we got there and visit our own family. But we thought, but then my spider sense went off after we booked our flights. And something said, no, I got to, I can't, I've got to go earlier. So I changed my flight. My friend sort of looked at me like I was kind of wacko, but it's, I knew I had to go earlier. So I, I, went, I went ahead, I had my trip, did all that stuff, came back, had a great time. And then I realized when I came through Toronto, oh, my friend, the plane I was getting off, my friend was just getting on because we were, would have been on that flight together. And then I came, you know, came home. And the next morning I found out that the Air India flight had gone down. And that's the flight that I would have been on. But I had no clue a couple of months before, but uh, but the spider sense went off, the alarm bells went off, and I knew I had to change that flight. And I did it because I'd learned to trust my sense. And and so that's a leap of faith. There's no logic, no rationale that says why I did it, but it it was that. And then the evidence showed up later. So Ravi, um, often intuition, woo-woo stuff gets attributed more to women, the feeling nature of women a little bit more. And I love your term there, spidey sense. And <laughs> It's such a great dynamic because I'm able to bring a little bit of a female perspective and certainly um, you bring a male perspective. For our male listeners, could you talk a little bit more about what does spidey sense mean? Where do you feel that? How do you experience that? So maybe they can start to feel into what that might feel like for them in their own their own body, their own mind. Well, that was... Uh... For me, it was inc that one was hugely powerful. It was do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars, get the heck in there and change your flight. I I'm thinking back. I there's different levels of intuition. Some is a gut stuff. Some is uh, a quiet knowing in the heart. There's I found there's different levels, but it's not in your head. That's number one. And quite often, what we do is we live in our heads. And so it's it's about how do you quiet the head enough to listen to that knowing that comes in our body. And I and I think there's there's science to this too. Now Heart Math Institute is showing that we've got another brain 
in our hearts and that that may be a channel for the intuitiveness. The, so what it is, is something, how do you describe it? Good. Something just feels squirrely. Something feels very uncomfortable. Like that's when it's a warning. There are other types of intuition where, oh, this way, this is good. But the, in that case, it was uh, alarm bells. And you know what? I, I've talked to many people, male, female, and they've all said when stuff didn't go right, whether it was a work decision or a relationship, they knew they had that knot in their stomach before, but they did not listen. They went ahead because it seemed to be the right thing, all the evidence, all the left brain stuff point, but they knew they had that knot in their stomach. So I think, you know, yes, women, I think are much more whole brained, but I think guys get that too. They get that uncomfortable icky feeling. And that's a technical term, icky. Icky, yes, icky. it is the scientific term. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know, I think part of taking a leap of faith too is building your trust muscle. And how do we trust ourselves enough to listen to that that icky feeling? Or, you know, we talked that this intuition, this leap of faith can be a good feeling too, that where you're at is good, but you could leap into something even better. I um, had an intuitive experience a few years back where I had gotten this, this call that I needed to move from Portland and I had an, an invitation to move to Denver, Colorado. And I'm like, but my whole life and my whole family and everything is yeah. here in Portland. Why would I move? And it, while I had a great experience in Portland, I had this inner knowing that there was something more calling me here to, to Colorado. And so, um, I had to kind of mentally prepare myself in advance for all those little trust muscles, all the times that that spirit had shown up, that gut had directed me the right way, that that if, if all those little times would add up. And it, that same thing that I believed about the universe was going to support me in this move. So I think as we look at taking a leap of faith, you get to look at what do you believe about the universe? What do you believe about the world around you, the people around you? Um, Oh, that's huge. Cause it's, and it's funny, too, that you use the word trust muscle, because I've always talked about a risk muscle, but I, I've got to play with that. Um, the thing is that the, what you believe about the universe is key, because I, I was just having a conversation about this with a friend this morning, that um, if you are taking a leap of faith, what that means is implicitly you trust that the universe is there to support you. The universe does not exist to screw you around. And so if, if you're taking a leap of faith based on that inner knowing, that means that you are trusting that it's a supportive universe. And that's a huge thing. If you want to get to to where you can trust the that leap of faith or trust that intuition to take that leap, that's the first step. You're absolutely right. It, and if you don't feel that it's a supportive universe, then you know you're not going to feel comfortable with that intuition no matter what I, and i think we should take that on in a, a future show this this idea of what do we mean by by universe and the universe supporting us because as with the study in the background that we have that's a very comfortable term for us but perhaps it's new to our listeners and we'd certainly invite you to email us or send us a tweet if, um, if that's a new concept for you or questions that you have on that so we could take that up on a future show but in general i think just for simplicity sake, the universe, the world is, you know, is everything plotting for your highest and best good. And when you come from life in that place, you'll see that more, more of that comes into your life. That's at least been, been my experience. Um, so Robbie, we have some uh, fun tips for people that are thinking about a leap of faith. Absolutely. Um, and for me, where I start, like I said, I'm still a scientist in many ways. Uh, and, and I come back to this is it's um, I, in no way, shape or form. Am I advocating you should listen to your gut and follow it absolutely and blindly and such. Never do I say that with any of my coaching clients or anyone that I work with. What I do, what I what I advise is exactly what I did. It's an experiment. And what you want to do is keep a journal. You can prove this to you empirically. Scientific method is about testing and the same conditions over and over again, you get the same results. So what I did when I learned to trust my intuition is I 
kept a journal, a log of those times when I had a decision to make. And I noticed what happened when I followed my intuition and what happened when I didn't. And what I discovered, I mean, you know, I, one of the things I, I like to say is, you know, forget 50 shades of gray. There wasn't one shade of gray. It was black and white that every single time I listened to my intuition, even if it was the stupidest, most ridiculous, idiotic thing made no sense, somehow it worked out. And every single time I didn't listen, even if it was logical, it was strategic, it, it had every reason this was the way to go, caca happened that I could never have planned. And in that way, I learned to trust. And what what then you start doing, just notice what happens when you follow your intuition, what, when you don't, when you take the leap of faith, when you don't. And as you do, you'll start to, um, you can start taking, you know, smaller leaps of faith. And slowly, you're building your risk or your trust muscle. And as you do, it, it just grows more and more. I mean, I do a lot of this with my clients in the corporate environment uh, who, you know, there's some people who will say, well, I can't do anything in this organization because this restrict." And there are other people in the same organization, even heavily bureaucratic organizations that are just doing magic, that are doing all sorts of things, but they've built up their risk muscle. They know what they, what is right, what feels right. And as a result, they're getting results that nobody else is. But it's a matter of building that muscle. So it's, first of all, start recording it and be, being very scientific about it. Secondly, um, start, you know, when you can, start taking small leaps and things that aren't going to expose you a lot. Uh, and then slightly more and so on. And and this is just in... in um, work it's it's in every part of your life right we we talked about it with the show i mentioned about my trip i've done it in my personal life there is uh, a few years ago i was in a relationship that was absolutely wonderful and then at one point certain point after quite a while we both just had the feeling it was time for that to end and we trust that we did not know why i now in retrospect i can see why but we just had that knowing and people say, why did you do that? Because we sort of knew, we knew. And we stayed friends, but we ended the romantic relationship. So that's in a personal thing in work. I've had things where I've had to put a proposal together and I've been trying to push and push and push myself and I can't do it. And finally I just say, okay, something's going on. I, 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 I stop. And the day before it's due, the client contacts me and says, look, we can't make the meeting tomorrow. Can we change it to next week? Fine. And guess what? Next week I had the proposal ready, but I, I could not get it ready in that first time frame. But uh, it's, it's about trusting that and building up that trust. So it takes a while to build that muscle. So that's my tip. Be a scientist about it. Prove it to yourself. Uh, and I'd add to that create simplicity and safety mm. that breaking these down to little things um I've, I've had some viewers reach out to me this week and they were seeing this show topic and they're like oh man it's the perfect time for this topic because i want to take a leap of faith and i want to change careers or change jobs and they've been in these jobs for forever and while i'm certainly supportive if that's what they feel my advice to them was maybe test out what that would feel like some smaller little things create safety and simplicity as you build your trust muscle so maybe instead of just oh my gosh i'm going to leap and, and change my job maybe it's i'm going to go volunteer in the industry that i'm i'm into um i'm going to go take the person who has this job to coffee um another one and i this this is showing up for me too is a way to test your intuition too is so often we get in our head about going places mm -hmm get in the car, I always drive the same route, I drive the same route to work. What if you jumped in the car one day and said, okay, spirit, okay, inner knowing, which way should I go? And you intentionally go a different way. Yeah. Perhaps you'll come across somebody different that you, you hadn't met before that you were supposed to meet or something different, different in that way. Creating little ways to test your intuition. I, I had one yesterday that I'm actually kind of proud of and sort of excited because I've honed this listening trust muscle so well I had got an intuitive hit, a little message in my mind that said um, my friend Amanda needed 
words of encouragement from me. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And then it came back twice. Sometimes this intuition thing, you got to practice it a little bit. Oh, okay. This showed up twice. I'm going to write Debbie a little note or Amanda a little note. And then, De and so I wrote Amanda this little note, sent it to her an email. And then I texted her, Hey, just, just thought you needed positive words today. And Amanda wrote me back and she's like, how did you know? Yes. I can't wait to read your email. Um, I do that often with, you know, good old school cards. You know, if somebody, somebody's, message comes into me that I that I need to chat with him um, do I listen to it and do I act that's how I ended up getting my column on in science of mind magazine was my inner intuition kept coming in I, you need you need to write for an international magazine you need to, and no 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 so see even those of us seasoned professionals at this say no 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 to intuition showed up three times and I finally said okay I surrender what is it that you <laughs> do and, and that that inner knower came into my hands and said, here's the name of the person. Here's the, here's where you get the email of the person. Here's how you write the proposal and hit send. And I leaned into that trust muscle, that wrist muscle. Believe me, this was way bigger than I had seen for myself. A total leap of faith. I hit, I'm like, okay, if this is supposed to be enter, like I had nothing to lose. And within 24 hours, the editor called me. I love your concept for the column and the show. We had a great face-to-face -face meeting and much like this show, um, it's evolved. So what is that thing that's calling you, that little intuition thing? Maybe it's um, just a little thing. Hey, wear the pink dress instead of the blue dress or some of those things, but that call to act. Um, so we've got experiment as one tip. I'm letting go of the, the second guessing. I gave you a few examples of, of my second guessing experiences with that one. Um, be willing to ask that follow-up question of yourself, of that intuition. And then uh, don't analyze to death. You mentioned earlier, uh, our society teaches us to live in our head. Yeah. And um, my word is don't analyze it to death. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So true. And I think, you know, we have to remember that even if it ends up being a mistake, we've learned the lesson that we're supposed to learn from that mistake or that experience or for that particular person. But le taking a leap of faith is really about, about action from within. So often in these leaps of faith, we want to interview all of our family members and all of our friends and get all of their opinions. Oh, should I do this? Oh, should I oh, do that? God. Then you're so confused. <laughs> yeah. And then you're more confused than when you started. And uh, Ravi, I hope I'm not uh, indulging confidences here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it out. And yesterday, you sent me this beautiful picture from this meditation spot. And I know earlier in the week, I had sent you a, a picture from, from my meditation spot as well, that part of taking your leap of faith is being willing to leap into yourself and leap into that, to that quiet time. And, you know, if you're a mom, you're a business owner, you're this, that. We know you're busy. But if you want to take a leap of faith, maybe just commit before you – you know, pull the trigger on that leap of faith. You're going to spend 10 minutes a day for, for three days sitting in the silence listening. Or, you know, find find a little time for you so that you can get clear about that next action. And that one little action turns into the next that turns into the next, just like the iTunes uh, podcast. Because if I had taken that on as one big leap, it wouldn't it would not have probably yeah. gone well. But I, I listened and leaped and listened and leaped and listened and leaped. And pretty soon that little leap became this, this pretty giant leap and opportunity for us to share these principles. Yeah. And, and I mean, one of the things that you said that, that the second guessing, I think, is really huge. I found with myself and with my clients that people go, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not you know, smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not this enough, right? That, that we diminish ourselves. And it's really trusting yourself that you've got what you've got. And that's perhaps one of the biggest challenges. Yes, trusting something beyond uh, so what you're aware of, but also trusting and believing in ourselves that, that we can do what's needed. And I think that's part of the growth in learning to take a leap of faith. Well, and it's trusting the network you currently have, friends, family, colleagues, and also trusting that that friend, family, colleague that you may not currently have in your Rolodex will show up when you need it. Uh, that, that's yeah. huge too. I've had the right person show up at the right time. In the case of the iPod, the iTunes thing, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I reached out to my friend, Phil Gerbachak. Hey, Phil, what am I doing? Sure enough, he showed up. He, he helped me. And that's, you know, again, I believe that the universe is here to support that which we want.
Yeah. And one other thing before we, we, we wrap up, I remember you had asked, uh, and I think it's a great idea, and we'd love more input from, from our, our viewers, is uh, ask for input put on the show and one of the questions someone said is uh you know should you have a plan b or what should plan b be and i i the thing is to me if you've got a plan b it's not a leap of faith if you know that there's a fallback then that you're not fully trusting right so what that to me says you step back let's take smaller leaps and you know, it's where's your risk muscle? Push it a little bit more instead of way out. And and because if you're feeling that you you really need a plan B, then then perhaps you need to step back a little. It's a little bit too big a leap. You need to build that muscle. And are you leaving room for for higher and better for for more more spirit, more good to come in? Because yeah. if we had had the plan for the show and the show was just on blab this is just exactly the way it's going to happen, then we would have limited the possibilities in that leap of faith that we took. You know, if you're considering a, a job change, yes, it's great to set some intentions around what that leap might look like, but are you open to the fact that that universe, that, that trusting faith muscle could bring you something even higher and better than you can even dream of? Yeah. Um, and I think that's part of the magic of it is the journey. Because once you've leaped, like this show we're still not where it's where it's going and what i'm enjoying is the journey of it evolving and creating and that's the magic you know it's not about okay let's get this goal let's get it's a magic of discovery and that and in in this present moment that's that's what life's about I, 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 it's the the opening your heart over and over and over again. Um, I have a friend who took a leap of faith, took a new job, and it, it didn't work out for her. And we've been having some great conversations about how she, how much she's learned from opening her heart to this experience, and that that's actually taking her to a better job that she wouldn't have mm -hmm. even have dreamed of. But if she hadn't taken that initial leap out of the job she didn't like into this one she kind of just sort of liked, then she wouldn't have opened all these other doors of possibility, including entrepreneurship, including writing, photography, all of those things. That, so by not having that plan B, but being really open to the possibilities, um, she's going to have a life that she, she never dreamed of, and it's yeah. going to be better than she even dreamed. So I think we're just about coming to time on this. And, uh, you know, thanks to people for checking in on the special day here. Uh, next week, we'll be back to our Friday, regular Friday slot. Um, and our thought, oh, one other thing, too, is we can, uh, you know, we haven't even talked about this, but we'll probably be bringing at some point some guests into the show. But also, we've got the capability on Blab. If you've got questions and you're tuning into us live, you can actually call in and we can chat with you as well. So that's something that would be wonderful to bring on here. Next week's show, because it's vacation time, our, our focus is going to be on how do you actually take time out to renew? Because for a lot of people, vacations can actually be exhausting <laughs> because you're running around with everything. With uh, If you're single going with a bunch of people, there, there, there can be a lot of business. If you've got a family, there's all sorts of coordination. It, it can be exhausting. So how in the midst of all that do you actually take time out to renew? yourself and come back refreshed new thoughts new beliefs new actions ready to take on the world um, with your higher consciousness sometimes we have to just let go of all the the overthinking stuff and a great vacation can invite you to do that absolutely so thank you everyone for tuning in thank you so much holly great to see you ravi have a great week and we will see you all next week